the stories of mahabharata retold by sudipta bhaumik welcome dear friends to another episode of the stories of mahabharata during the last episode we heard about the grand show of arms by the kuru princess and the arrival of karna into the arena of the mahabharata soon after the exhibition drona called his students and said boys you have formally completed your training and i have taught you all that i could you have demonstrated your skills to your elders and to the citizens of hastinapur and from their applause and cheers it was quite evident that they were more than satisfied with your performance and they have passed you with honors but to graduate you have one more task to complete you have to pay me your guru dakshina my fees yudhishthira said gurudev please let us know what you want we'll scour the heaven and the earth to fetch it for you drona said very well then here is what i want from you go to the kingdom of panchal and bring me king drupad as a captive yudhishthira was surprised to hear this drona noticed and said you must be wondering why i am making such a strange request let me tell you why when i was a young boy and was studying at rishi agnivesha school drupad the panchal prince was there too we were very good friends in fact he was my best friend one day he told me drona drona you are my best friend and there is nothing in the world that i cannot do for you i promise you when i become the king of panchal i'll give you half my kingdom i told him you are just being too emotional now i am sure you don't mean it he said drona i am drupad prince of panchal i always mean what i say i laughed and said well then maybe one day i will take you up on your offer after we graduated we parted our ways drupad became the king of panchal and i went on to learn advanced skills with weapons and arms but my skills failed me in making money i was very poor and could hardly feed my family and then i remembered my friend drupad's promise i went to the panchal court before drupad and said my dear friend i have come to accept my share drupad looked surprised he asked who are you what share are you talking about i was shocked to hear this i told him drupad you don't recognize me it's me your friend drona drupad looked at me for a while and said yes indeed it's you drona the brahmin huh? <laughs> so so what have you done to yourself i could hardly recognize you i said my friend i am going through a difficult time and poverty must have had an effect on my appearance drupad said that's possible but what brings you here what share were you talking about i told him friend don't you remember your promise when we were at rishi agnivesha school you had promised to give me half your kingdom so here i am to accept my share drupad laughed out loud and said i promised you half my kingdom are you out of your mind i was really surprised you forgot your promise my friend i said you promised me drupad stopped me and said no no i never promised you anything and don't call me a friend yes we were students together at rishi agnivesha school but you were never my friend you were a poor brahmin boy and I, and i was the prince of panchal how could we be friends remember 
only equals can be friends saying this he laughed again and his entire court joined him in laughter and those sounds of laughter entered my eyes like hot molten lava i felt so humiliated and insulted that i that i could barely stand on my feet my entire body was trembling in rage i looked at him and said drupad one day you will have to pay for this dearly and i left the court from that day onwards i have been looking for an opportunity to get back at drupad and give him the punishment he deserves and today is the day i know i know you can fulfill my wish and that will be my guru dakshina duryodhana stomped the ground in rage and said acharya your wish is our command i will bring the arrogant king drupad in chains and make him kneel in front of you in no time saying this he jumped on his chariot and sped away towards panchal with his 100 kaurava brothers the pandavas too followed the kaurava brothers towards the panchal kingdom but before entering the city arjuna said let's wait here and watch what happens to duryodhana drupad is not a weakling and i'm sure our arrogant cousin duryodhana will get a good thrashing from him and his army so let's watch their strategy and their war tactics and then we will attack at the opportune moment but as the kaurava brothers entered the panchal king capital they were stopped by a huge panchal army consisting of thousands of infantrymen hundreds of horse mounted cavalry and hundreds of elephant mounted soldiers the efficient spies of drupad had alerted the king of the impending attack and drupad was waiting to face duryodhana and his brothers on his golden chariot soon a fierce battle ensued and duryodhana was overwhelmed by the panchal army drupad attacked him violently with a barrage of arrows and missiles which duryodhana was not able to counter at all the citizens of panchal also joined hands with the army to defend their homeland duryodhana had no other option but to retreat the pandava brothers have been watching all this from a distance when they saw duryodhana backing off arjuna said brother yudhishthira i think we should strike now you wait here the four of us should be good enough to defeat the panchal army saying so the four brothers bhima arjuna nakul and sahadeva attacked the panchal army bhima whirling his huge mace started to destroy the panchal army like a bulldozer nakula and sahadeva attacked with their swords while arjuna sped through the army on his chariot to attack drupad the endless stream of arrows from his bow killed thousands of soldiers on the way failing to counter this fierce attack the panchal army started to flee the war field soon enough arjuna faced drupad and a fierce battle broke out drupad fired a barrage of arrows to arjuna but arjuna destroyed them all in mid flight some of drupad's soldiers who tried to protect their king were crushed to death by bhima's deadly mace Drupad's elephant army tried to cover him but Bhima struck them down with his mace killing some while the others fled Arjuna with a quick succession of arrows killed Drupad's horses his charioteer cut off his flag staff and bow and left Drupad standing helpless on his broken chariot Arjuna then dropped his bow picked up a sword and jumped off his chariot and ran towards Drupad He held the sword at Drupad's throat and said, "King Drupad, in the name of our Guru Dronacharya, I capture you. Please come with me." The Pandava brothers tied King Drupad in chains and brought him to Hastinapur and offered him as their dakshina to their Guru Dronacharya. Drupad stood there in front of Drona. with his head down in humiliation drona smiled and said so drupad it seems now i own your entire kingdom and all your wealth what do you have to say about that drupad couldn't say a word drona came close held his arm and said don't be afraid 
I am a Brahmin and I forgive you. I would still like to be your friend, but as you have said, how could unequals be friends? So, I give you half my kingdom and we can then continue to be friends. Do you accept? Drupad had no other option but to accept the offer. He was being humiliated like never before. But he swallowed his pride and said, Drona, you are indeed very kind to forgive me. Yes, I accept your offer with all humility and hope to stay your friend forever. Drupad went back with half of his Panchal kingdom while Drona took over the other half. But Drupad could never forget this humiliation and from that day onwards, he began to look for ways to get back at Drona and the Kuru dynasty, one way or other. As the days passed, the Pandavas grew in strength and popularity. They have been defending Hastinapur from external attacks, conquering kingdoms all around, amassing huge amounts of wealth for the royal treasury and donating large sums of money to the poor and needy of the kingdom. The citizens of Hastinapur knew that good governance and prosperity awaits them as soon as the Pandavas took control of the throne of Hastinapur. But the Kauravas did not like this at all. It pained King Dhritarashtra to think that soon he might have to hand over the throne to his nephew, Yudhishthira, instead of his son, Duryodhana. In his hurt, Dhritarashtra knew very well that Yudhishthira was indeed the most eligible prince to inherit the throne. He was the most learned, the most righteous and the wisest of the Kuru princes. His ministers, his advisers and even Bhishma has been urging him to make Yudhishthira the crown prince as soon as possible. But he kept on stalling the inevitable. Then one day, Akrura, a close associate of Krishna, visited Hastinapur and told him, O King Dhritarashtra, I hope you realize that Yudhishthira, son of King Pandu, is the rightful heir to the throne. You have been serving as a caretaker and you served well. But now is the time to hand over the reins of the kingdom to your nephew. Remember, Kunti's sons enjoy the support of their cousin, Lord Krishna, and of the entire Yadav family. Dhritarashtra, though blind, was smart enough to get the hint. The Yadavs were extremely powerful, and Lord Krishna, it said, is the reincarnation of God Vishnu himself. Krishna had killed his uncle, the vicious king Kansa of Mathura, with his bare hands. He was also known to have killed the ferocious demon Putana, and killed the monstrous serpent Kaliya. Nobody in their right mind would dare to antagonize Krishna. So Dhritarashtra thought it would be prudent of him not to go against the will of the people. Hence, with great reluctance, but with much pomp and grandeur, Dhritarashtra pronounced Yudhishthira as the crown prince of Hastinapur. Duryodhana was furious. He told his father, How could you do such a thing, father? You are the rightful owner of the throne and as your son, I should have been the crown prince. Dhritarashtra said, My son, control your anger. I know very well that I have done a disservice to you. But believe me, I had no other option. If I hadn't made Yudhishthir the crown prince, the citizens of Hastinapur would have revolted against me. They would have thrown us out of the palace and made Yudhishthira the king. The Pandavas also enjoy the support of the Kuru elders, the Yadavs and most of all of Krishna. Duryodhana was still fuming. He said, but father, the way things are going soon, we the Kauravas will have no existence in this kingdom. People will soon forget us and we'll have no legacy to leave behind. Tritrashtra said, My dear son, I understand your concern and I don't disagree with you. But you must also understand that I cannot disregard the law of the land. 
I cannot disregard our age-old traditions and customs. But, he paused for a while. But what? Duryodhana was anxious to hear what his father had to say. Dhritarashtra, very hesitantly, almost in a whisper, said, Remember, Yudhishthira is still not the king. He is only the crown prince. Duryodhana looked at his father. His faint smile appeared on the edges of his lips, which the blind king couldn't see. He only heard the sounds of his son's footsteps fed away as he left the room. Dhritarashtra stood alone in the center of his chamber and stared at the eternal darkness ahead. Duryodhana, along with his brother Dusashana, went to see their uncle, Shakuni, who was a cold mind for evil ideas. Shakuni said, <laughs> My dear nephews, you must understand one thing. The Pandavas enjoy the trust and support of the citizens of Hastinapur. They are the favorites of Bhishma, Drona, Kripa, Vidura. If you try to do any harm to them, they will not pardon you. Turyodhana was frustrated. He said, then, then you suggest that we sit idle and watch the Pandavas enjoy the throne? I'd rather die than go through this humiliation. Shakuni held Turyodhana by his shoulder and said, Who says you have to go through this humiliation? Not while I am alive. Turyodhana and Dusashana looked at him curiously. Shakuni said, Duryodhana, you must win the trust and the support of the people of Hastinapur. But with the Pandavas around, that's impossible. So, we must arrange to send them away, far away from Hastinapur, out of sight from the people of Hastinapur. And as you know, out of sight is out of mind. <laughs> Dusashana said, you mean, you mean send them on an exile? Shakuni smiled, no, 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 not an exile, a vacation, a very long vacation to a nice and warm place. And while they're away, you try to build your trust and support with the people of Hastinapur. Duryodhana was restless. He said, but, but, but what when they come back? They'd once again claim their throne, wouldn't they? Shakuni looked at him and smiled. <laughs> what if some kind of an accident befalls our beloved Pandavas while they're on their vacation? People can't blame you for that, can they? <laughs> Duryodhana's eyes lit up as he grasped the potential of Shakuni's evil plan. He continued his discussion with Shakuni to finalize the details of their devious plan and its execution. But Tritarashtra was still suffering from his ethical dilemma. He was being torn apart by his love for his son and his obligation as a king. He called upon his trusted advisor Kinaka and confided in him, Kinaka. Kinaka, I can't bear the fact that I had to crown Yudhishthira as the future king of Hastinapur while my son Duryodhana stands in the sidelines. Tell me, tell me what should I do? Kinaka was a shrewd politician and a close confidant of Duryodhana. He said, O king, one has to bear the burden of an enemy like a fragile but heavier than pot of water until the right moment. And when that moment arrives, don't hesitate to unburden yourself by crushing it to the ground. One who wants to become great and powerful must exhibit kindness on the exterior, but should be sharp and ruthless like a sword at heart. A fisherman kills thousands of fishes to build his fortune. Similarly, one cannot become rich and powerful without being cruel and vicious. O Kuru King, 
you are the most powerful person now so protect yourself and your clan while you can do what you must and make sure you don't have to repent later kinaka's advice swayed dhritarashtra again towards duryodhana so when duryodhana came to his father and asked him to send yudhishthir and his brothers on a vacation to the city of varanavata he didn't refuse he knew he knew that duryodhana was up to something evil but he didn't press for any details he only asked but why would they agree to go to varanavata i need to give them some justification duryodhana was ready with his answer tell them the city of varanavata is celebrating a grand festival people from all over the country delegations of all the major kings are visiting the city to join the festivities the pandavas should visit varanavata as the representatives of hastinapur if you request them they won't refuse and once they reach varanavata you don't have to do anything else i can take care of the rest saying so duryodhana left the king's chamber and dhritarashtra sat down to prepare his proposal to the pandavas The Stories of Mahabharata is written, directed and told by Shudipta Bhamik. Audio engineering, original music and sound design by Avi Ziv. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any other podcast catcher. On Twitter, we are at Mahabharata Audio. The podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial license.